everyone has to start somewhere. Everyone has to start from scratch. According to my mum, I started my journey as soon as I could move, navigating towards anything that had a wire. But I was lucky. My family supported me. Others don't have such an option. Hello, I'm Toby Johnson, and today I'm going to talk to you about why everybody should learn to code. As a child, I was always building stuff, be it a cardboard model of the gut bee or a Duplo structure that looks vaguely similar to the Eiffel Tower. I just loved making things. In reception, I was introduced to bee bots and loved them, spending all the time I could making them go round and round the little maze. I was then introduced to Scratch Junior and very quickly mastered the basics of it. But I decided that the simple nature of it was rather limiting, so I decided to teach myself Scratch. For Christmas of the following year, my uncle bought me a Scratch Pico board. I made a couple of quick projects with it before making this burglar alarm with my uncle later that year. It was then that Scratch was first introduced into my year three class and I got to show off some of the projects that I had made by myself. I was lucky enough to have an ICT teacher who realised that I knew my way around the Scratch platform. After I had begun to master Scratch, I began looking for another programming language to learn. I'd recently even bought a programming book that covered Scratch and then into the basics of Python, which I used to learn the basics of Python, loops and if statements, etc. And a few modules like Takeinter and Turtle. My uncle then told me some more Python and with his help, I made some pretty cool projects. Unfortunately, my amazing ICT teacher left a few years later and I was stuck with a teacher who didn't know how to use the Scratch platform. And so some weekends I would come home and have to make a Scratch project before coming into school and teaching my classmates how to drag and drop the blocks from one side of the screen to the other. It was at this point when talking to some friends, I realised they had no idea how to actually make something with Scratch. They were just copying what I put on the board. I realised then how lucky I had been and the importance of having a good ICT teacher, be that at school or at home. At around this point, I encountered everyone's favourite single board computer, the Raspberry Pi. I booted Raspberry in onto an SD card and plugged her into my TV. It scrolled past all the exciting loading text before deciding that it didn't like me and crashed. Luckily, a simple reboot fixed this problem and I was back up and running in no time. I programmed a couple of simple projects just using the onboard operating system, but I could see those pins and just wanted to use them. So my uncle bought me a GPIO breakout board and over a weekend, he taught me the basics of reading analog sensors and controlling servos. And by the end of the weekend, we had built up a basic photoresistor sun tracker. Let me just tell you something about this world. There are lot, lots of inequalities. For example, humans can have Fitbits, but dogs can't. This was the problem my first major project was trying to fix. My invention consisted of a tinfoil ball bouncing around the inside of an old Smarties tube, which would test for continuity and count the number of bounces, or approximately how many steps. I never got to test my contraption, however. I learned an uncountable number of lessons, both in rapid prototyping and building stuff with just the things you've got around you. I recall this build as the first time I had an idea and turned it into a real contraption. Annoyingly, someone else got one to market before me. After this point, I was starting to move from beginner Python into a more intermediate range learning object-oriented programming and many, many more modules. However, I had a problem to fix. In our class WhatsApp group, everyone just kept saying hi. Some days I would come home and find I'd hit two to the 11th messages. And as most programming puzzles start, I opened up Google and searched the way to control WhatsApp for free. It turned out that the only way was using Selenium to control the WhatsApp web, in web interface. And after spending the weekend searching through documentation, YouTube tutorials, and searching through the developers console, I had a system. 
It will search the most recent message for the word hi or hello, then find the message bar and auto reply hi. Unlike many other young programmers, I didn't start just to make games. But when a friend told me about the Wiltshire Police Coding Competition last summer, I decided it was about time I learned how to make them. I downloaded Unity and learned the fundamentals of C Sharp before starting on my 2D platformer, Blocky's Adventures, where Blocky flies around and keeps getting pop-ups that try and teach valuable internet safety lessons. I submitted the game just before the deadline and my mum got a phone call about a week later saying they had won the competition and I was going to the police headquarters and receiving a Raspberry Pi, which is actually a favourite of the police force from the deputy chief police constable himself. After seeing an article in the Mag Party for Pi Wars, I signed up almost immediately and started work on my robot then and there. Admittedly, the first version was four cheap motors hot glued to the inside of an empty pack of raspberries, but I had made progress. Unfortunately, my application was turned down a few weeks later. Next year, however, I will have had even more experience and a plan to put on the application form. The one thing I haven't and may never find is a good name. After discovering the unfortunate flimsiness of a pack of raspberries, my second prototype considered the same electronics, but this time I've screwed them down onto a small piece of half inch MDF. Unsurprisingly, the chassis was too heavy and the motors buckled beneath the weight. Despite this, my second prototype massively improved upon the first design, but I knew I needed a better one. Behind my back, my parents and my uncle were discussing getting me a 3D printer. They looked around eBay and found the Ender 3, which after some research, they decided was a very good beginner's 3D printer. And by Christmas last year, I was unpacking my very own Ender 3. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a Chinese knockoff, which had a malfunctioning thermistor and a plug without a fuse as some of its many, many problems. After fitting a new thermistor, we managed to have some success with printing. But unfortunately, six prints in, the bed tore apart while attempting to move the print. Enough was enough and we returned it. But we didn't give up. And after doing some more research online, we decided to buy the Ender 3X and I haven't looked back since. After a few months of learning CAD and printing some fun projects and printer mods, the world was struck by an awful, awful pandemic, and I was sat at home feeling useless. I saw that some people had been printing face shields with their 3D printers, and a quick Google search located the 3D Crowd organisation. I joined just before the big print weekend, and managed to print 21 in those first few days, with lots more coming over the following weeks. It felt amazing to be doing something that might be saving lives somewhere along the line. And this brings us up to today. I'm beginning to get back work on my robot design and hopefully I'll make it into Pi Wars next year. I've been incredibly lucky having an awesome uncle who's interested in what I do and happy to share his experience to help me develop my robotics, as well as willing parents who support me. I've also been lucky enough to have had a couple of excellent ICT teachers over the years but I know this is not the norm for most children today. Imagine if everyone had access to someone as knowledgeable and supportive as my uncle from a young age. Computers are the future. Children are the future. And they need to work together. Thanks very much, Toby, and really well dealt with our technical difficulties there. Um, so we've got a question from Kate of what's your next thing that you're hoping to print and create? So at the moment, I am working on upgrading the extruder system on my printer. So I'm currently printing parts for that during the pause on the printing of the face shields. 
Great. And are there any uh, sort of electronics projects you're working on? Yeah. So my robot for Pi Wars mm -hmm. is um, also being designed at the moment, which I'm hoping to print in the next few weeks. Nice. And I've got another question from Leo. If, uh, what do you want to study when you're older? Um, so I want to be a robotics engineer when I grow up. So something, well, just things that would get me closer to that would be amazing. Great. Uh, and another one from John. Of, uh, what's your favorite programming language? Um, I've done a lot of Python and I'm pretty comfortable in that. So I'm probably going to have to say Python for that. Great. And are there any you're looking to learn in the future? Um, I'm quite into web development at the moment, so probably JavaScript and into that side of things. Nice.